Hello, I'm Agonda. What's Agonda, you might ask? I, I don't know. Why, I'm, I'm more like an oven mitt. Not, not really a gauntlet. Oh. Hi, Caesarin here with another video, and uh, I figured I would explain what the gauntlet is and uh, give some starting tips and tricks as well for the gauntlet. The gauntlet is a uh, race event that we do. Some of you have probably seen like the announcement with like Ziz and Shopify Rebels. I think this is going to be the third one, third or fourth. But we are planning to do a gauntlet race every league. It is a private league, hardcore solo cell fun. There are some difficulty modes on the league. So it's increased monster damage too, which means monsters deal 20% increased damage. Monster life, so monsters have 40% increased life. And monsters have 20% increased attack, cast, and movement speed. Monsters gain 30% of physical damage as extra fire, cold, and lightning damage. And the most dangerous one, monsters fire two additional projectiles. And for this event, it's players have minus 20 to all resistances. Now, normally we do minus 40, but because this is a class gauntlet, we are doing minus 20. That's just to make it a little bit easier so that we aren't not everybody's playing a champion basically we wanted like i know a lot of people wanted some diversity in uh, builds in the meta so we're trying to make it class specific not ascendancies that's a little bit too much work to track and it's also it'll split the prize pool very very thin whereas uh we can still have some pretty cool prizes with uh classes so that's what we chose for this one but it's always going to be changing a little bit this is very very hard and it's sort of deceptively hard because the start is harder than the end. If you're in the racing discord, there's already some practice leagues that you can join and uh, try your hand at this. Is it possible to So since everything has all these dead? crazy mods, I just made a, uh, a practice league to show you guys real quick how difficult something like Hillock is. And Hillock can very, very easily one shot you. Uh, and this is going to be a quick Hillock tutorial. And uh, I'm also going to walk through like all the early zones and talk a little bit about what are the most dangerous things early. Because if you can get to Act 2, and especially Act 4, it just gets easier and easier. Um, you need to start treating the game more like mapping very, very early. Don't think about each zone as something you just do once and then progress, but actually grind out areas and overlevel. Um, so you actually have to run counterclockwise, like I'm running now, and you hit once. And if you hit twice, you're very likely going to be killed. And also, you do want to make sure that you kill the other zombies too. You don't want to have like multiple like I do right now. But if you run like this, you can see that I'm not getting hit at all. I'm going to face tank one hit now just to show how much. Look how much damage that did. And that was on a hit. That means that on a crit, it one shots you. So always just attack right after he does, and you can very easily like run around him like that. It's nice Boom! We're dead, winning. Yes. We're the first level two. I'm gonna just like leave here, and uh, and show you. Yeah, we're basically gonna get vaporized here. So let's say I was running right. The furnace down at the. And you'll see that house. everything just yes. does so much damage. That's what this place. So like. the safest thing is actually running straight through it here without attacking. Um, the zombies are gonna kill you very quickly. The cannibals. Now, normally the cannibals will always one-shot you, but because we only have minus 20 resistance, it's, also, it's, it's not so dangerous with only minus 20 res. Uh, but those normally do like a, an actual one-shot because now I only have minus 20. So my recommendation, don't even try to like put on like any starter gear. Just run to the waypoint and ignore this first zone entirely. We'll try to find you'll see like they'll very very quickly kill you it's so easy to die here and start you really want to run through it go all the way up to the waypoint uh then maybe remake the zone there uh so that there's no mobs around the waypoint and then you go do mud flats so i'm gonna log on a different character so i can like try to talk a little bit about all the starting zones and what's the most dangerous so we've covered coast coast is fairly easy um, Mudfuds is fairly scary. I don't really like staying around here very long. I try to clear it very, very carefully, uh, and from a distance. Like, I don't really want to get close to the monsters. They can charge you, and two of them can kill you. 
So I basically want to get to like submerged and do hail rake pretty easily. A quicksilver is very, very big and so is having uh, either dash or frost blink. It depends what build you're going to play, obviously, but having a movement ability is huge in this. Submerged Passage is probably one of the easier zones. You could definitely like kill monsters here and, and start leveling here a little bit as well. And obviously in this league, we are also going to have rituals. When do you do them? I would recommend being 10 levels over. That's when they stop spawning. So being level 15 and far being submerged is not a bad idea. They are going to be incredibly valuable. Probably the best zone you can farm is going to be being level 12, having resist gear and farming the coast. The earlier the zone is, the more likely it is to drop a tabula because there are so few unique items at that level. So farming like any of the starter zones while being 10 levels over is going to give you a bunch of transmutes. They're going to give you a bunch of useful uniques like Wanderlust. You're going to get a gold rim. You're going to get a tabula. And I, I think a large amount of players are going to do that. You really need to have a completely different mindset than the normal part of the game because you're just going to get stomped in the first three acts. You're going to get absolutely stomped. Uh, so it is important to have a build that you think can do well end game, but also you want to have something that can handle the early game. That is very important. Ledge, again, very scary here because we have the goats, we have the, the birds that fire like multiple projectiles, and we have like rock throwers and archers. Um, I would say as an estimate, you might want to budget maybe two hours per act is not a bad idea. If you're new to hardcore um, and you're not experienced with the gauntlet, two hours per act is pretty good. And if you're normally using two hours per act, maybe do four. Like there was um, there was one guy, he said, Sis, I've never played hardcore before. I've never played with these mods, but I'm determined to make it to maps. And I think he said he was like level 28 or level 30 for killing Weaver. He spent like three or four hours grinding in Act 2. Basically like he would mapping just to like over level. And he made it all the way to maps, which is a huge achievement. Um, it's very, very difficult. And once you get to maps, you can roll them blue. And it's basically like every map is just really rippy. If you roll them out, then every map is potential death. Um... But either way, I, I would recommend over leveling quite a lot. There's nothing wrong with being five or eight levels over leveled and taking it slow. Play it a lot more like a roguelike game or like Dark Souls, but it is not the path of exile you're used to playing. Um, the climb also very, very scary. I am terrified of both the unique bosses here. The goat is insane. The archer is insane. And I've died to them very often. Um, the, the goats that jump are also insane. The spellcasters are pretty okay. Prison, not too bad. The archers here aren't too bad. Um, the, the skeleton archer, or sorry, the skeleton shackles, or whatever he's called, uh, is fairly dangerous. Brutus isn't too bad. Brutus isn't too bad, because especially now that he has that, like, stomp in one place move, where he, like, hits the ground three times, that, like, gives you so much, like, opportunity to actually damage him, that he's not too bad now. Make sure you move a lot, uh, and a decoy totem helps massively if you um make like any ranger for example and just do br the mud flats breaking some eggs then you can buy decoy totem for any other character um so i usually do that i make a ranger i do breaking some eggs that's the first thing i do now i can get decoy totem on any character and it's huge for leveling uh i even use it for like clearing just being careful prisoner's gate pretty easy and this is a very very good xp zone there is the unique dog the unique dog thing that explodes with fire is scary. The goat's not too bad, uh, but it is a fairly good XP zone. Ship graveyard, nothing really dangerous here, and you do want to do fair graves. And Mervale's cavern as well, not really dangerous. However, Mervale is very, very dangerous, and you want to... Uh, one thing freedom that's important to know here easy. is, remember, two iron For rings. Freedom. Let's see if we can grab one, but you can... If you can't buy a cold sapphire rings, remember that you can turn iron rings into sapphire rings with, like, the vendor recipe. Which is very, very easy. So I'll just buy an iron ring. I'll buy a blue gem and we'll vendor them. And boom, that'll give me a 28 sapphire ring. God Beautiful. Abandoned us. Beautiful. And then we'll just, you know, throw throw like an essence. If you're going slow, you should have Hello. a bunch of currency. You should at least Enough. have something. Either way, 75 cold rest for Mervale. Get it? It's so worth it. Um, I d wouldn't have too low fire or lightning either. You really do want to have a large amount of resist here. So farming act one a lot and making sure you have decent res. Very important. 
honestly, if you die two or three times to Merveil and have to start over again, that is pretty acceptable. It's a, it's a genuinely hard fight. So we move on to Act 2 and Southern Forest. This is amazing. I'm definitely going to be farming a large amount here. This is probably the first place where I'm going to like really grind out some rituals because I'll probably be like level 20 and there's not that many dangerous monsters here. So I, I think I'll grind it out quite a bit here and get a bunch of currency. I kind of want to start thinking about getting resist capped here in Act 2. Not anything like crazy scary here. You have uh, Fidel Fidelitus is uh, fairly rippy in Chamber of Sins. Try to kill him from ranged or at least smoke mine while on top of him. But honestly, it's pretty easy to get one shot by him. There's no like particularly noteworthy zone to be like terrified of here except for the Weaver. And over leveling doesn't really help that much either. You want a large amount of damage and you want a smoke mine and you want to stay pretty much on top of the Weaver while moving very, very close proximity around. Because the Weaver has like a ball attack where she lobs a ball. However, there's three of it and there's AOE overlap and it does like 1500 damage or something. And that's on an on crit. So it's very, very easy to die to the Weaver. Um, most people give up here. Um, but if you do get past Weaver, like Vol isn't too bad. Decoy Totem really sorts them out. Same with Weaver, really. Decoy helps a lot. Just be careful about placing it in melee. You don't want to avoid her doing her like ball attack at all costs. I would also recommend on pretty much every character, help Alira. The earlier you can get resist cap, the better you can respec Alira later. Uh, and honestly, it just helps a lot in this gauntlet. Pretty much all of Act 3, I would say, is very, very easy. There are no particularly noteworthy mobs, except for the Lunaris Temple and Scepter of God. Lunaris Temple is death. Very, very, very easy to die here. And this is literally the most case of don't get hit ever. Now, do remember that the uh, titty bitches, or whatever you want to call them, I don't know what they're called. Titty bitches is a good word. The naked chicks that machine gun you uh, are just death. They will obviously, they'll target your location and then machine gun in that location. If you get hit, you're pretty much dead. Let's whip out paint for this. But if, if you're running, let's say uh, you're running here on this passageway, there's... There's like five of them there. They're going to see you here and they will fire in this direction. If you just frost blink or flame dash to here and then kill them, you're probably safe. But if you start attacking them from here, you can very, very easily die. Do remember that they will target a specific location and fire that way. So moving and then killing them is going to be how you get him. Once you are past this and Dominus isn't too hard either. Neither is Piety. They're both pretty okay. Once you are past this, pretty easy there's nothing like particularly noteworthy um obviously everything is harder than general every time you encounter dodri deidre dodri she's very very hard um anything with projectiles oh malachi is actually very very hard um but those are like the main things and again over level five even ten levels if you want to take it real slow and just have a very very different mindset the, the best advice I can give is think of it as mapping. Think of it as like from the start you are mapping. It is no longer just something you have to get through as a chore. It is an achievement. It is very difficult uh, and most people won't be able to do it. So I just wanted to make like a quick video, talk a little bit about it. I'm also going to be making like build guides and some resources for how to play in the gauntlet like that. Hope you guys are excited. I'm very excited and I uh, hope you guys are enjoying all the YouTube videos. Thanks for watching. Sub if you liked the video. But more importantly, try to die less than I do.